Hi everyone, Ada here, and today I can finally talk to you about this massive RTX 4090 card I have right here. So this is the ROG Strix Gaming OC from ASUS, and I've already reviewed the 4090 chip itself, as well as the Founders Edition in my previous video, so you can check that one out. But this flagship model from ASUS is supposed to take uh, that already amazing performance even further. So let's check it out, let's see how it performs, and more importantly, how does it compare to three other 4090 cards I tested so far. Let's go! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12-volt high-power connection that you need for these brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from NVIDIA. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The RTX 4090 size has pretty much become a meme at this point, but this ROG version is even larger than the already massive Founders Edition. It is almost 36 centimeters long, it is 15 centimeters deep, and 7 centimeters thick. So you really need to uh, grab a measuring tape and really make sure that your case has enough space to actually fit it. It is built extremely well and it weighs over two and a half kilos thanks to its massive heatsink and the vapor chamber. Uh, that is about 300 grams more than the Founders Edition and half a kilo more than the Gaming OC from Gigabyte. But size aside, it does have that typical three fan layout, and this time around, ASUS took a bit of a risk design wise and went with some very noticeable red and blue details. Now, I personally kind of like it, but it also makes it harder to match this card with other hardware or to maybe match it to a certain color scheme you have in mind for your build. So I'm pretty sure that not everyone will appreciate it as much. In my opinion, uh, neutral colors are always a safer choice or just adding some RGB where people can decide to uh, either turn it off or just pick a specific color they need and that will fit their system best. That being said, you will only see this side if you vertically mount this massive card. Otherwise, you will just see this beautiful backplate that is quite neutral and the side of the card that adds a bit of RGB for those that appreciate it. We can also see the two fan headers there that ASUS has been adding for a while now, allowing you to easily connect two extra fans that will spin up or down depending on your GPU temperature. Uh, you get this small GPU holder as well that you can also use as a screwdriver. The power comes from the same 16-pin 12-volt high-power connector that NVIDIA uses as well, and just like on the Founders Edition, they also included an adapter that converts four 8-pin PCIe cables from your power supply to this new 16-pin one. But again, it is very short and I really recommend that you try to get a proper longer cable from your power supply manufacturer, uh, just like I have this one for my Seasonic power supply. Uh, it will look much better and it will be much easier to cable manage it. On the back you get three display port connections and two HDMI connections, while all other 4090 cards I have right here only offer one HDMI 2.1. You also get a dual BIOS and you can choose between a performance mode and a quiet mode depending on what you prefer. Now, before I dive into the performance of this card, let's do a quick recap on the chip itself and how it compares to the previous generation of graphics cards. And as you all know by now, it is a very impressive chip that made a huge performance jump in one single generation. Compared to the RTX 3090, it is about 60% faster on average on 4K resolution, uh, making the jump from mostly doing 60 FPS on 4K resolution to doing 120 plus FPS in most games, and that is without DLSS on. Even at 1440p, there is a big 41% improvement over the 3090, so 
it is not a bad option for those fast 240 hertz quad hd monitors and also at 1080p we saw a significant improvement even though this resolution is mostly cpu bound but let's see how this rg card compares to the founders edition so the clock speeds are up by about 3% over the FE, averaging at 2764 megahertz in both performance and quiet bias. While the memory clocks remain unchanged, which goes for all four RTX 4090 cards I've tested so far. But exactly how much extra performance you will get from that slight increase in clock speeds will completely depend on which game you're playing. Uh, it will range from about 1% in Dirt 5 to about 3% in World War Z, but in any case, it's usually pretty small to the point where you'll probably never really notice the difference between any of these cards while gaming. But you will see a difference when it comes to thermals and noise. And this ROG card is actually the quietest of the four. In the performance profile, it only hits 40 decibels, with the Supreme Liquid X being right behind it. It is 2 decibels less compared to the Founders Edition, which doesn't seem like much, but you can actually hear the difference. The quiet profile only drops the noise level by a little bit, and you will notice that only if you put your ear right next to the card, which is quite unrealistic. But from a 50 centimeters distance, you won't really notice a thing. And keep in mind, this is only under load because this card has a fan stop feature that will stop the fans completely when the GPU has very little to do. Now, being super quiet means that the ROG card isn't the coolest of them all, but it still has improved temperatures over the Founders Edition. And the same goes for the hotspot, and the same goes for the memory temperatures. More importantly, all three of these temps are just completely comfortable, which isn't surprising because these designs were made with a 600 watt chip in mind, while the end result uses actually a lot less power. And depending on the BIOS settings, the power consumption of this ROG card sits between 434 and 444 watts, which is slightly under the TDP value and in line with the other cards as well. So in a typical gaming scenario, my i9-12900K rig with this card uh, was pulling around 620 watts from the wall, which isn't really more than when I was using the overclocked RTX 3090. And that means that if you have a good quality 850 watt power supply, you should technically be completely fine. However, I would recommend that if you are buying a new power supply, you go for a 1000 watt model instead because uh, it will be quieter, it will run closer to its peak efficiency, and you will also have a bit of headroom uh, for either overclocking or for the upcoming CPUs that are actually rumored to be even more power hungry. So the RTX 4090 itself is really impressive and the ROG Strix version does very well as it does every generation. Now the FPS gain from the factory overclock is kind of small, but that's also the case with every other recent Nvidia card. But the thermals are improved and it is noticeably quieter than the Founders Edition. I think they've taken a bit of a risk when it comes to the red and blue details on the cooler, but it is still an impressive looking card and I'm sure that a lot of uh, high-end RTX 4090 buyers will be tempted to pay a bit more for this model right here. But the question is, how much more? I haven't seen any pricing just yet, but I do expect that you will be paying a hefty premium over the FE for this very expensive design, uh, for some extra features like the extra HDMI port, like the fan headers, uh, dual BIOS and the RGB, or simply for the fact that it is ASUS. Uh, they're always a bit on the expensive side. And there's also a lot of high-end buyers that will pay that extra for the brand alone. Still. It is important to mention that the Founders Edition already performs really well in every single aspect, so for this card to make more sense uh, to possible buyers out there, ASUS really needs to make sure that their pricing is not too far from the already high MSRP. Now, that is all I have for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to check out my other RTX 4090 videos. And if you want to make sure you never miss any of my future uploads, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Bye guys and see you in the next one.